Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we want to show you folks is buckling and before you figure out how to fix it, you got to know what causes it. This house all around the perimeter is buckling, meaning um, it's protruding out so the walls flatten it kind of after say on this particular house it's about an 80, 90 year old house. What happens is they don't have a weep screen here. And if, even if they did, sometimes it can still buckle, by the way. But how you fix this is, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to tap it out. Now, generally, I'll put a mask on and glasses because I don't know what's in here and I don't want to inhale it. But all we're going to do is we're going to relieve some of the tension on this particular house. Uh, and, and that is, listen for the sound. It's somewhat hollow. And I'll show you, I'll take you around and show you why this is somewhat natural and it's it's normal guys it's nothing to panic about i the folks here they emailed me and i looked at a picture and then i came and looked at it last night and i thought pretty petty and the reason i say that is because after 80 90 years all the seasons of rain and sun the houses tend to settle and when it tends to settle it'll buckle like this sometimes not all the time but here's how we fix it i'm just going to tap it out i'm going to pull it like so and any loose stuff, you can hear it. We just tap it out. And what we want to do is we want to tap it out and replace it with, with other, with some new stucco. And that just, it relieves it. There's, there's tension here because it has nowhere to go. It's like glass. If you flex glass, it's going to crack. This stucco is the same thing. And what we're going to do is now all around this house, anything loose like this, this is how we're going to handle it. It doesn't, it doesn't require a lot of strength or muscle, but it does take some time. I've, we've, I've taken on myself, I've removed uh, stucco on a, say, if the equivalent of 10 two-story houses. I know how to remove stucco. After 30 years of doing it, I'm an expert at it. So what, again, as I tell folks, let's, we're going to release some of the stress here. And it's not a big deal. You just keep tapping it, keep tapping it. And so we're going to get started with that and get here and then I'll show you how we actually, after we removed everything we want to remove, then we're going to go ahead and take a water hose, wash some of the dust off, put a bonding agent on and re-stucco re it. I'll come around here, I'll show you some, something that I was referring to. They're like, right to here it's somewhat loose. Then over, uh, this is somebody did a little patch, we're going to fix that while we're here. This is a dash finish. You put a, use a dash brush and you fling it on. So we're just going to put a little bonding agent over that and fix it. But here's what I'm talking about, guys. This, this right here is, underneath here, this is a weep screed. The addition was built in 2004. Now they did it proper here with a, a weep or a drip screed. It's designed when water goes through the stucco, it weeps out of the holes here. Now that actually, I think it's 76 when they started using that. It wasn't until 1980s that a lot of people actually started using it. But when you use a weep screed, it acts as an expansion joint also. So there's no cracks here. But even with a weep screed, you can get a crack. There's one here. So a lot of people will call me and say, hey, can you put a weep screed around the per entire perimeter of my house? And I said, not necessary, but I will if you like. One last thing. We're going to walk all the way around the house. Uh, know if you can get a shot of this, Jay, but... <clears throat> right. Okay. Uh, Alright, guys. Same house. A uh, little worse situation here. I don't know if you can zoom in here, but see, it looks like rust. It looks like little mushrooms. That is mold spores, guys. Uh, if I were to tap that off right now without wearing a mask, I would release that in the air. I would inhale it. All night I'd be coughing. When I get to something like this, I have some um, chemicals on my truck. I'm going to neutralize it. Put it in a spray bottle, hit it, neutralize it, and then knock it off. Or, I mean, I could take a water hose and hit it like so. Keep, all the, keep it wet and then just tap it off. But I don't want to inhale this stuff. Fortunately, it's on the outside. I see those mold spores sometimes guys and it's usually by pipes so you guys see this on your house 
wet it, soak it, but don't inhale it. Anyway, we're going to get busy and continue with what we started off as. All right, guys, let me see if we can't show you all in one how to do all this. Uh, it took a few minutes to prep all this stuff. What I'll do, guys, is after I break out what I need to break out, and that's the loose stuff. After a few years, you know what's loose and what's not. Yeah, we can tear the whole wall off if we want, but we made an agreement to take just the loose stuff off. And what I did is I took a water hose and I hosed down all the dust because if you have dust, the next coat won't adhere more than a year or two. Then we take uh, some kind of bonding agent. I love Weldcrete. We take this blue stuff, go all the way around it, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and patch this in. I'll show you how we patch it in. Jay mixed me up some cement here and this cement just has a little bit of accelerator in it. And the accelerator is to, of course, uh, accelerate the product because I want, I want this to be dry and say, oh, um, 20 minutes. 20 minutes is fine. Okay, we're going to take it here. Take it in there. Get some more of this stuff. Could be a little hard or stiffer, but I can make this work. Right now it's uh, somewhat loose because we just put the accelerators in it. But these, but this luminite which we use, once it sets, it sets. So I'll take this guy here. And now granted we are about, oh, come on now, get in there. All right, we are over an inch and a half in some spot. Right here, I'm just going to give it a texture. Here, we fill it up. Tight squeeze under here. I'll show you guys how we do this texture also. Like I say, let me get a couple more scoops, finish this bucket. All right, squeeze it over here, finish this off. This is already starting to get hard now. When I first started putting it on, it was falling out, but I can see right now it's getting hard. Nothing to it, guys, if you know what you're doing. Let's see, one more hawk full. And again, you see a minute ago, this was pretty runny. This isn't runny anymore. This is Look at that, it's getting stiff, guys. That alumini in it works fast. Okay, here, there. Wow, that's already setting. One more. Then I'll show you how we float this. I always float it prior to doing the dash finish so that my finish is tighter. All right. Woo, that got stiff quick. All right. Now what I'm going to do is, you can stay where you are, Jay. This is preliminary before I do the dash finish. We take a green sponge float, tap the water out. Okay, now this is already set. And I think, wow, man, that's fast. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling it up, pulling it down. I don't know if the camera can show inside here, but see that? Now that's, that's ready for the next coat, which is a dash. I'm about to show you guys how we do a dash in a better spot, because that's tough right there. All right, remember as we started this video, I had a little patch right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll get rid of this float. I'll get a dash brush, dash of salt. You flick it on. That's where that word come from, eight inch bristles. They have them all different sizes, guys. What I'll do is I'll take, take the dash brush, wet it first, and I'm taking some mud right here. This is the mud that we're spreading. I'll get this guy in here. See how much is on here? Now, I want to get, I want to dash, but I don't want it clumpy, lumpy. There's a 
about 20 different ways to do dash finishes. The way I want is to match this, a light dash. Now, what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna hose this down, but for the sake of showing you folks, let's see, fill the bristles, throw all the excess off, and then dash it. Light dash, light dash. I don't, and I'm gonna feather it in the dash too. And that blue stuff here, that's just weld crease so it'll match. And there you have it. That's the same finish. When they paint this, we'll match that. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get on my hands and knees under there and finish all that stuff and float it too because it is hardening fast. Anyhow guys, my name's Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering, Jason on the camera as usual. We thank you for watching. And of course, also as usual, we'll see you guys on the next fix.